According to Home Ministry data, only 17% of the promised houses for Kashmiri Hindus have been completed in the last six years. Only 5,928 Kashmiri Hindus have been appointed through the Prime Minister's job scheme. The number of Kashmiri Hindu refugees is 700,000, a figure derived from the data provided by the government of Jammu and Kashmir that says 83,200 families fled Kashmir in the aftermath of the Kashmiri Hindu genocide. Why do they want to hide the truth about BK Ganju who hid inside a rice barrel when jihadis came looking for him after his Muslim neighbor informed on him? Why do they want to hide the truth about slogans raised from mosques on 19th January 1990? Ralif, Salif, Galif, convert, run or die. Death to kafirs, pundits go but leave your women behind. nizam mustafa Why do they want to hide all this? How can these pillars of our democracy forget those cries of Girija, those laments of Deena Nath? How? Is this what a so-called Hindu Rashtra is supposed to do for Hindus? We are the only country in the world that allows this across parties, across governments, right or left or center. Three years to 2019, 3686 law and order incidents occurred in Kashmir. Three years since 2019, the number is only 430. Terror attacks have reduced by 40 percent since 2018. Good evening, everyone. Uh, when I came here, I was told that uh, Lashkar-e Taiba has given a threat to the organizers of this Kashmiri uh, Hindu Global Conference. Uh, judge Falcone, the famous Italian judge, once said, "He who doesn't fear death dies only once." The Lakshare Toiba and its cohorts only have to look at the audience and the faces here, young and old, women and children and men, to see that all of you will die only once. Yeah. Many others before me have spoken the truth, the, the tragic way in which Kashmiri Pandits and Hindus are thought of, are labeled as cowards. It is the tragedy of this country that such labels are put on Kashmiri Hindus. Was it cowardice that made Vijaya eat the rice laced with her husband's blood? Was it cowardice that allowed Girija to be sawed alive after being gang raped? Was it cowardice that led Sri Utpal Kaul to wrap his one month old son in a jute sack and escape from certain death. Every year, my good friend Aditya, his son, shows me the bus ticket that Utpalji bought on 19th Jan 1990. And I've always wondered when I look at that ticket, every year he takes it out from under the mattress, shows it to his son. What did it mean? for a father to have kept a bus ticket for 33 years? Was it to remind himself of that horrific journey of his clasping tight his wife and his young children while he sat lost thinking of what he had left behind? Was it to remind himself of how he was counting every passing minute, counting every passing milestone to safety? Was it to remind himself of that blurred instant in the bus that contained within it the image of his struggles ahead? Or was it to remind himself that he needed to be strong, that this was a cruel, unforgiving country, that his struggles were his alone, and that he shall have to fight them all by himself? Was it kept under his mattress all this while? Did that bus ticket take the weight of his unbound sorrow every night of every day of every month since January 19, 1990? No. He kept it to remind himself that from now on, in his mind, that bus ticket was his adversary and that he shall look at him straight in the eye and tell him that he was down but not out, that he was undefeated, that he shall pick himself up and find work and educate his children and bring food to the table and greet every new day as he did the last 
with a smile on his face that he shall not be conquered and today when the father slipped his hand under the mattress and found that bus ticket and gave it to his son he could almost have said son i pass this on to you now it is yours now you take care of it for it must be preserved for our future generations they must never forget that a man's body may be forced to flee but never his spirit they must never forget who we are and where we came from we are kashmiri hindu son and we stand today on our feet and one day we shall take the journey back home we are not cowards in one sense ladies and gentlemen kashmiri hindus are children of mahatma gandhi not only because he is the father of the nation but also because his vision is on the cusp of being realized while preaching to those affected by the pre partition hindu muslim violence he had urged and i quote hindus should not harbor anger in their hearts against muslims even if the latter wanted to destroy them even if the muslims want to kill us all we should face death bravely and if they establish their rule after killing all hindus we would be ushering in a new world by sacrificing our lives unquote every time every single time a kashmiri hindu passes on a currency note the same mahatma sniggers at him as though perplexed why he hasn't yet sacrificed his life to usher in a new world well the mahatma need not snigger his vision stands realized the new world has truly been ushered in terrorists are targeting hindus settled in kashmir but not the hindus visiting kashmir tourist footfall in kashmir this past year has been the highest ever a staggering 16 million business is booming registers are ringing tourists are safe they want the hindus to flee but then return later as tourists they want the hindus to come as tourists and fill their coffers but not settle in their own land as kashmiri hindu sushil pandit himself a victim of ethnic cleansing says quote tourism in kashmir funds jihad the hindus are funding their own demise unquote how on earth can we watch this unfold and not do anything about it what kind of a country is this where one can settle 40000 rohingya muslims in jammu and kashmir but not 7 lakh kashmiri hindus there is no other way of saying it we live in a nation of broken mirrors where you possess neither a shadow nor a reflection if you are a kashmiri hindu we live in a nation that waits for death to rid us of our remembrances please wait a little more just a little 33 years have gone but we haven't progressed from ugly inhospitable transit camps that dot the kashmir landscape at shekhpura natnusa virwan vesu matan hall in anantnag's vesu transit camp kashmiri hindus who want to flee because they fear for their lives are being kept locked up they can't even step out to buy essentials like milk and medicines is this the kind of freedom promised to the land's original inhabitants while the rohingyas enjoy unfettered movement in the near vicinity according to home ministry data only 17% of the promised houses for kashmiri hindus have been completed in the last 6 years only 5928 kashmiri hindus have been appointed through the prime minister's job scheme the number of kashmiri hindu refugees is 700000 a figure derived from the data provided by the government of jammu and kashmir that says 83200 families fled kashmir in the aftermath of the kashmiri hindu genocide 5928 5928 i shall leave it to the mathematicians amongst you to subtract this number from 700000 to an extent the kashmir files the recent film by vivek agnihotri has tried to reset the kashmiri hindu narrative and that is why so many are rattled by it many prominent kashmiri voices the politicians the intellectuals writers poets all those who stayed silent 
even as the Kashmiri Hindu genocide unfolded right before their eyes. They called for a ban on the film. To them, I ask, can there be reconciliation without remembrance? Crime without comeuppance? Can there be death without deliverance? Can there be justice without Nuremberg? Why do they want to hide the truth about the Nadi Mark massacre that the film truthfully depicts where terrorist Zia Mustafa lined up 23 unsuspecting Kashmiri Hindus and shot them point blank and, and as he was escaping, he heard a baby cry and his comrade goaded, ye karnua chupe. And then the baby became the 24th victim. Why do they want to hide this? Why do they want to hide the truth about Girija Tuku who was raped and cleaved in two by a mechanical saw while she was still alive? Why do they want to hide the truth about BK Ganju who hid inside a rice barrel when jihadis came looking for him after his Muslim neighbor informed on him? Ganju was shot dead. Rice laced with his blood was fed to his wife Vijaya. Why do they want to hide the truth about slogans raised from mosques on 19th January 1990? Ralev, Salev, Galev, convert, run or die. Death to kafirs, pandits go but leave your women behind. Nizame Mustafa. Why do they want to hide all this? And what's this other side of the genocide that the demand should also be shown? That Yasin Malik, assassin of squadron leader Khanna, loved Damalu? That Bitta Karate, killer of 42 Kashmiri Hindus, was the son of a shawl weaver? That Zia Mustafa, perpetrator of the Nadi Mag massacre, was a compounder at a hospital? I'll tell you why they want this truth to be hidden. Because they realize that the Kashmir Files is not just a film. It is a Proustian collection of memories of Girija, of Ganju, of Dinanath, of tens of thousands of Kashmiri Hindus who were betrayed by their own friends. They can never take away from them their words. For their entrapment in a film may fool us into believing they have a physical form, a form that can be destroyed when the film is destroyed. But the words existed much before their prisons did. Words never die. They always survive. In times of terror, we wrap them and we hide them like our ancestors did. And it for 3,000 for them to be uttered again, but uttered again they will be. And when they are, their words will echo in the valleys of violence where people only know how to light molotovs. And these words will make them light diyas again. To be sure, I do not care about Islamists and the politicians forgetting about those words. What bothers me is that our government, our judiciary, our society has forgotten them. How can these pillars of our democracy forget those cries of Girija, those laments of Deena Nath? How? Hearing them, those words, those haunting voices, one feels lost for hope, wondering whether the fabled arc of moral universe would ever bend towards justice for the Kashmiri Hindus. Remember that three years ago, the Supreme Court diabolically rejected reopening cases of criminal atrocities against Kashmiri Hindus because, quote, too much time had elapsed. That's correct. Justice is now weighed against time. A month ago, the same Supreme Court reiterated its previous stand that of not opening cases of atrocities against Kashmiri Hindus. Governments come and go and we shout and we make a hundred excuses, but we can never get away from the fact is a ball hurled high into the air. He hangs there, frozen in time, translated into a photograph, denied motion, suspended impossibly above his native earth. He awaits the inevitable moment at which the Photograph must begin to move and the earth reclaim its own, unquote. When will that photograph begin to move? Mind turns numb at the very thought that a nation is going about its business for 30 years while half a million Hindus have been reduced to refugees in their own land. Is this what a so-called Hindu Rashtra is supposed to do for Hindus? We are the only country in the world that allows this across parties, across governments, right or left or center. Three years to 2019, 3686 law and order incidents occurred in Kashmir. Three years since 2019, the number is only 430. 
terror attacks have reduced by 40% since 2018. But then why is it that only 5,000 Kashmiri Hindus have been brought home? And of those few who have been, more than 25 have already lost their lives. Making Kashmir files tax-free was great, but remember your dharma. It is to make sure 7 lakh Kashmiri Hindus are brought home. Time is running out. A refugee accepts his fate and the humiliation that comes along with it. For he must worry about his new life. He forgets how to complain. And that is a fatal mistake. Arunduti Roy, that totem of the left, once cushioned the crimes of Maoists by calling them, quote, Gandhis with guns. Well, Kashmiri Hindus are the Gandhis without guns. And that is a singular reason why no one cares for their plight in this country. Because this nation hears complaints through the barrel of a gun, not the ink of a pen. This nation believes inaction is a medicine. It believes time heals. It believes wounds do not fester. It believes the exiled never return. This nation, as I said, waits for death, for death to rid its people of their remembrances. This nation wishes the Kashmiri Hindus all happiness and joy in the afterlife. Kashmiri Hindus are the Jews, but unfortunately, India is not Israel. They call Kashmir the Switzerland of the East. Wrong! It is the Srebrenica of the East. And it will remain so till such time every Kashmiri Hindu is returned home. Every single one. Thank you.